Welcome to Graphic Novels and Comic Books in the Library, a capstone project by Rachel Stein. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a presentation on graphic novels and what they can do for your library. You may have noticed a skyrocketing demand for graphic novels over the last few years, which is a far cry from when I was in high school passing around copies of Sandman like they were contraband. You see, my high school librarian would never dare dilute her collection nor stunt our intellectual development by letting us read comic books. Don't judge this woman too harshly. In 2001, few, if any, librarians understood what a graphic novel was or how to make use of them in their collection. Whether you are a comics fiend, a complete noob, or somewhere in between, this presentation is for you. I will discuss the history of graphic novels and their ever-evolving role in library spaces. I will cover the importance of understanding your students' needs and desires. We will touch on the benefits of graphic novel reading and cover censorship issues related to graphic novels and comics. So sit back, relax, prop your feet up, and grab some popcorn. You can read most graphic novels and comics from left to right like a traditionally formatted book. Generally, you also look at the panels displayed here, starting at the top of the page and moving from left to right, row by row, just like a regular book. You want to start by reading anything in a rectangle at the top of the page before the speech bubbles. That is a symbol for voiceover narration, usually the point of view character's thoughts. Speech bubbles can be tricky to follow because they are squeezed into the frame, but generally, generally move from top to bottom and left to right as well. Each page of a graphic novel has its own unique structure for these panels, as well as for the gutters or the space between the panels. A graphic novel, comic book, or manga has panels on every page. Many traditionally formatted books contain a few panel drawings, for example, Dave Pilkey's Captain Underpants or Jeff Kinney's Diary of a Wimpy Kid. However, most librarians do not shelve those books as graphic novels because they focus on the text rather than on the panel images. If you're not used to working with graphic novels, you may find yourself quickly buried in all the technical jargon. I just threw a bunch of new words at you, and you're about to hear several more. You've got comics, graphic novels, trade paperbacks, manga, fandom, cons, panels, gutters, non-illustrated books, and suddenly you're overwhelmed. Here, let me make it easier for you. Comic book a magazine format for publishing illustrated stories featuring words and images using panels on each page. These are distributed mainly by Marvel and DC. Examples of comics include this one and this one. Graphic novel, an original story never printed in serialized version. It may or may not contain characters from comic books. Here are a few examples. Trade Paperback, a book containing a full story originally published in comics. This is a trade paperback, and so is this. Manga, a Japanese comic typically printed in black and white and read from right to left instead of left to right. Very popular with teens. Here is a copy of a manga. Graphic Novels, A History, Part 2. By now, you are probably wondering where graphic novels and comics came from. The combination of written words and illustrations go back about as far as written language itself. However, the creation of modern comic books can be traced back to the 1930s and early 40s, most famously with Action Comics number no. 1 and the first appearance of Superman. They have only grown in popularity but struggle to be seen as a legitimate format for literature, especially between the 1940s and 1980s. In the 21st century, graphic novels and comics are finally being utilized by librarians. There are many factors to thank for this, including, but not limited to, a younger generation of librarians who grew up reading comics and the popularity of Jerry Craft's graphic novel, New Kid, which won the 2020 Newbery Award. Graphic Novels, A History, Part 3. Despite growing popularity and accolades galore, many librarians, teachers, and parents continue to struggle with comic books and graphic novels. If I had a nickel for every time I heard someone tell a child they had to get a real book to go alongside their graphic novel, I could retire a wealthy person. 
Sadly, this is far from the only issue these books face. Many librarians practice self-censorship in the form of not ordering controversial graphic novels, according to Moeller and Becknell, 2022. And 19% of school librarians surveyed by School Library Journal took steps to protect their library against book challenges by pulling titles before a challenge took place, according to Crockcroft, 2023. When challenges and bans to books like genderqueer or Persephone's start trending, we panic and respond in the least librarian-like way possible. Some librarians even complained about Jerry Craft's graphic novel New Kid winning the Newbery Award. It was not proper, they said. Some even suggested graphic novels have their own separate but equal award so the Newbery could focus on traditional books, according to Yario 2020. A graphic novel is not a genre, but a book format for publishing novels. Any graphic novel for middle grade readers should therefore be awarded the same consideration as non-illustrated books for middle grade readers. Otherwise, we risk alienating graphic novel readers and suggesting that their books are less than. You hear horror stories about school librarians putting their graphic novels on vacation due to the kids checking out the same book repeatedly or kids making a mess in the space. The obvious solution to these issues are exactly what you would do if they were checking out the same non-illustrated book or making a mess in any other part of the department. You can enlist their help in organizing the section to deal with the messes. Kids love to feel responsible for something grown up. As for getting them to try new books, we have a myriad of techniques for recommending similar titles and can simply say, I love insert graphic novel title too. You know, what book goes great with that? Insert read-alike title. Children are best able to tell how over-criticized the format is because 68% of kids surveyed for the same school library journal article said that they were told graphic novels are not real books and the difficulties do not end there. Graphic novels and controversy outside the library. Librarians, teachers, and parents are not the only source of censorship attempts when it comes to graphic novels and comics. Early comic books often featured adult heroes with teenage sidekicks to help appeal to child readers like Superman and Jimmy Olsen, Batman and Robin, and Captain America and Bucky Barnes. As early as the 1950s, concerned citizens claimed comic books would rot children's brains and teach poor morals, according to Moeller and Becknell, 2022. <gasps> The horror! These concerns led to comic creators founding the Comics Code, which provided guidelines to ensure appropriate and morally upright comics. The code describes what can and cannot be shown in comics, according to Out 2018. It also provides protection to the comic creators, since you can point to the rules whenever someone worries about inappropriate material in a children's comic and say, that is not allowed. The Comic Book Defense Legal Fund was created to help fight against frivolous lawsuits. Some lawsuits against graphic novels were about stories containing LGBTQIA plus and or BIPOC authors and characters, according to Moeller and Bechtel 2022. And this barely begins to scratch the surface on the topic of censorship and graphic novels. But due to our time constraints, I must move on to the next topic. The Benefits of Reading Graphic Novels, Comics, and Manga, Part 1. When kids read books they like, it provides them with an increased interest in reading in general. Kids who read books they like experience many benefits, including increased vocabulary, reading proficiency, academic achievement, and mental and digital literacy proficiencies, according to Lowe et al. 2022. Lowe goes on to explain how children are more likely to read independently when giving books they enjoy. This fact is both obvious and yet bears repeating. Additionally, graphic novels and comics average 53.5 rare words per 1,000 words, while children's books average 30.9 rare words per 1,000, and adults average 52.7 words per 1,000 words, according to Edmund's No Date which means that just by reading graphic novels, kids are learning far more new words than they would if they were reading non-illustrated books alone. Plus, graphic novels use sequential images, 
which helps readers decode the scene and text with greater ease, according to CARP 2011. The format improves your ability to read every kind of book. Benefits of Reading Graphic Novels, Comics, and Manga, Part 2 I found the Schuer 2022 study fascinating. It proved graphic novels are far superior for teaching pragmatic language to English language learners, which suggests that any graphic novel in any language would have the same impact. Graphic novels provide insights into how individual characters react to spoken language, since their facial and body language reactions are in the same scene as the speech bubbles. A picture, book, or a non-illustrated novel will show one big picture or no picture at all, while a graphic novel shows multiple images per page, allowing you to better understand the actions, words, and social interactions of the characters. This, combined with socially acceptable uses of greetings, requests, expressions of gratitude, apologies, and more, meant graphic novel readers scored significantly higher on tests of skill acquisition than the control group. Overall, graphic novels are an excellent teaching tool for language acquisition skills, regardless of the reader's first language or only language. Since graphic novels are printed in English and in other languages, the same benefits should apply to a child reading a comic book in Mandarin and one reading the same comic in English. These studies prove your child's reading ability will improve whether they read a graphic novel in their first language or in a new language they are learning. Benefits of Reading Graphic Novels, Comics, and Manga Part 3 On top of the traditional educational benefits, Graphic novels feature many social and emotional SEL tools, including helping students with self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making, according to Rude's No Date. Books like Jerry Craft's New Kid and Art Spiegelman's Mouse are also praised for their use of mirrors and windows, which allow readers to see themselves or provide a peek into someone else's world. So, now that we've discussed the history and benefits of graphic novels, let us move on to some of the considerations to make when creating a graphic novel collection for your own library collection. Graphic novels in your library. First up, we have the coolness factor. Kids love graphic novels. At least once a day, I have a child come up to the desk and ask where we keep the graphic novels or where we keep the comic books. Having more of these will bring more people through the doors and it will engage children and teens not only in reading, but in doing better in school, using their libraries, and becoming better aware of the world slash more active in their community, according to Dylan and Lachlan, 2017. Next, we have intermingling. In my opinion, the choice between graphic novels being intermingled with the rest of the fiction collection and giving it a genre selection all its own are evenly split. Evenly split. The obvious risk of separation is furthering the suggestion that they are not real books. If they are with the regular chapter books, they would be regular chapter books. If they are not, maybe they aren't. And as we said, graphic novel is not a genre, but a format. There are general fiction, sci-fi, fantasy, horror, romance, mystery comics, and more. So having them all in one place, organized only by author, feels limiting. At the same time, people, and especially younger readers, love to browse the graphic novel slash comic section the same way they do in any other section. It would be impossible to peruse the graphic novels alone if they were all mixed in with the rest of the books. So you have to decide this for your own library and for yourself. Okay, so now you've ordered a bunch of graphic novels, put them out on the shelves, and you're reading comics, graphic novels, and reviews to be better aware of the category. What comes next? Comic cons in your library. After learning the lingo and gaining an understanding of comics and graphic novels, the next step is planning comic and graphic novel events at your library. Graphic novel book clubs can bring an entirely new audience in, and I highly recommend them. But the newest trend, and by newest, I mean the last 5 to 10 years or so, are fan slash comic conventions within the library. You can do everything from putting up cardboard cut-ups to pose with, to allowing artists to display their superhero-themed work, make sure they're local artists, to having opportunities for cosplay, which is where fans dress up as characters from TV shows, movies, comics, and more, to graphic novel and comic writing clubs, and anything else you can dream of. My library has a giant green screen that we set up in our recording studio space, and any study room would do fine. 
Our tech people then help patrons take photos and add background images to make it look like they're real superheroes fighting crime, flying, and more. Also, make sure to check out conventions close to you. Websites like conventionscene.com, upcomingcons.com, and thefandom.net are fantastic resources. There's also Free Comic Book Day, an event on the first Saturday of every May, originally designed to promote locally owned comic book distributors. Now the event is run by major, major comic publishers, and millions of Free Comic Book Day special issues with popular characters are sent to comic shops all over the U.S. Many libraries partner with comic shops in their area for the benefit of both organizations. The premise of Free Comic Book Day draws people into your library. Your, pay, your programs, graphic novel collections, and staff help convince people to use the library more. And the comic shop gets free publicity. Also, they can get rid of some of those extra stock of free comic book day books they couldn't otherwise use. And now that we have covered my, all my research topics, we can discuss a few of my favorite comics and graphic novels. There is, of course, far more information on all the subjects covered in my lecture. I highly recommend starting with the articles I mentioned in my lecture and branching out from these. If you have any questions, I can recommend further blogs and articles as well. Recommended reading. This is a brief list of recommended graphic novels and comics. It includes titles primarily aimed at children and teens since this is the age group I work with. Feel free to pause on this slide so you can write down or save the book list. Conclusion. In conclusion, I hope I have, at the very least, convinced you to see graphic novels, comics, and manga as real books. It was not that long ago librarians considered novels inappropriate reading for adults, and children were not even allowed in the building. Then it was children's books we did not approve of, then speculative fiction, and more recently, scary books and anything with toilet humor for kids. As you have seen from my presentation, graphic novels and comics can include complex plots, children's graphic novels contain a larger vocabulary range and provide many tools for emerging readers. We cannot discount the value of allowing children to read books they enjoy. It is critical librarians present a unified front on the graphic novel and comics given the degree of censorship and book banning attempts they have faced in recent years. If we do not stand together, we will fall separately. So please stand up. I also hope after viewing this presentation, you will feel inspired to grab a few graphic novels, if for no other reason than to improve your own reference skills. After all, graphic novels, manga, and comics span as vast a gauntlet as any other book format. You might want to order the materials best for your collection and patron population. The first step in creating a new collection sh should be surveying the population. If you have already started a graphic novel collection, now is the perfect time to, rec to review your current collection before adding more titles to it. Thank you, and have a lovely day.